respected judges my dear friends make no mistake about it we live in an age of scarcity amidst abundance you know there are so many positive adjectives associated with our country of late so many positive adjectives in fact a recent study conducted by who recently concluded that the number of crorepati ceos that live in our country numbers among the thousands and i'll give you another not so flattering statistic 31% of the children of our country have no access to primary education 31% of the children of our country have no access to portable water what does that mean 31% of the children of our country have no access to the hope of a better life the question which begs to be asked is why the disparity why the gulf why the gulf between the corporate and the most vulnerable yet the most important section of the indian population the children why the gulf atrium foundation with its helping hand program attempts to bridge this gap now before going into the intricacies of how the helping hand program is put into practice i'd like to give you a small introduction on our ngo talking about our profile atrium foundations is an ngo founded in 2000 has engaged themselves in fulfilling their csr towards the society the organization partners with unicef judges please note with unicef and the government of india in a bid to uplift thousands of indian children who are denied basic children's rights now when we talk about basic children's rights what we are basically hinting at is education talking about our mission and vision to enable people to take responsibility for the situation of the deprived indian child and so motivate them to confront the situation through collective action thereby giving the child and themselves an opportunity to realize the potential in other words put simply we firmly believe that the only way of deliverance of this country or put it in another way the only way by this with by this country can right rise up to the superpower it is touted to be in the future is through education now here's how the helping hand program works to break it down what we do is we set up helping hand stalls especially among areas of where there are heightened corporate activity after you set up these stalls we sent our agents what these agents do is they educate the ceos the corporate honchos the big guns on the top floors and educate them and what they basically do is channelize their money channelize their money a modicum proportion of which will be received as commission by the agents another modicum of which will be retained by atrium foundations and the majority of which will be used for child support that is basically meaning to fund children's education now as you can see by the diagram this is basically how we break down the channelizing of money you have the corporations on this side you have the mlm st staffs these are staffs which run on the mlm concept they channelize the money it goes to the helping hands which is partnered with unicef and government they to ensure credibility on the part of the ceos by which they are convinced to give a part of their money the the money finally goes to the child support basically as i said before to fund children's education now go on, going on to the number of strengths available we have reduced ourselves to just four points five points 
the first of which is the benefits assured to donations made to charity safeguarded under 80G of the Indian Income Tax Act of 1961. The obvious question here would be, what's in it for the CEO? That is your answer over there. All donations made under Section 80G of the Indian uh, uh, Income Tax Act is out of the tax ambit. Hence, they, are, ca they can avail of the tax benefits available. Secondly, the advantages of CR, C, uh, CSR, they cannot be overstated. As you all know, in today's, uh, today's world, all of, the all of the companies are in a mad rush to do something about uh, in the area of CSR with the sole intention of building up their reputation, building up their uh, uh, uniqueness amongst their rivals and creating a better impression among the general public. The next and most important strength would be it is a sure short way to raise the funds for less fortunate children without any extra burden on the national exchequer. Without any burden on the ex national exchequer, all we do is channelize the funds, channelize the money of the CEOs who in other ways had to pay it to an irresponsible state. What we do is channelize those funds for needy children. The next one would be, it is a win-win situation for all parties concerned. Something which I already covered before. It is a win-win situation for all of the parties concerned, including the corporate honchos on the top, including the agents that we hire, and finally, in, and most importantly, the children, who are the end users of the funds. Talking about the weaknesses, the unpredictability of the MLM methods effectiveness. As you all know, there is some sort of a notoriety with regard to the way network businesses function. That is a major impediment as the agents work on an MLM method basis, working on commissions. But the pro thing to be remembered here is that compared to the network system of business, what the, M what the agent does here is he does not invest anything. All he has to do is convince the CEO about investing or channelizing funds for, to help a child. That's all he does. Finally, the task of, no, secondly, the task of convincing the CEO about the effectiveness of the program, that is a major impediment, that is a major weakness that we face because you all know that CEOs are cynical about donations. Finally, a strict supervision of every penny transferred so that no discrepancy may arise. Mind you, this need not be uh, restated because the government's varying attitude towards NGOs, especially in policy making areas. Over here you can see that for our flagship program, what we are planning to do is we are planning to set up stalls at Techno Park and in Info Park. The, the passion may not change, but the governments will eventually change. We do not know what is their attitude towards such an NGO in the future. So that is the threat. The opportunities available is, it cannot be overstated. The ever-increasing need of the corporates to discover new avenues, avenues for effective CSR. The magic word to be remembered there is effective CER, not just simple, not just any CSR, effective CSR. And that is what we provide. That is a huge potential, a gold mine. Finally, the need to transform abundant human resources at a very early stage to make a better India in the future. But to put it simply, catching the children while they are young and educating them and making them industrious, making them effective, making them productive. Moving on to the STP, which will be taken by George. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, again, the segmentation part, what we have concentrated more on was that based on the income level and the corporate status, uh, as Jerry have already told, what are, uh, what are the targets, what we are looking for? And for that, the eff efficient segmentation would be uh, done on the basis of the income level as well as the corporate status. And uh, uh, the targeting, the basically lo uh, we are basically looking out for uh, high-end corporates, high-end corporates, you know, who have already into this, uh, who are already into this uh, charity and uh, corporate social responsibility field, and uh, 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 and th uh, th uh, those uh, those would be our target ma uh, target market. And positioning uh, in positioning in the sense like instilling in the minds of the corporates as well as the youth that wealth sharing is uh, is as important as as wealth generation. And this uh, this is some uh, this is a concept which has been uh, perished you know, due to uh, 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 perished from our culture uh, in this modern generation. And uh, we are just going back for the same concept and uh, uh, positioning this particular message in uh, uh, modern uh, upcoming corporate world as well as the youth. 
and the USP would be the effective mechanism for reducing disparity between different sections of society. You know, this is what uh, basically we would like to call ourselves, you know, uh, Atrium Foundation. Like, uh, we are a machine, which uh, a mechanism or a system which uh, reduces the disparity between uh, the gulf between the uh, most vulnerable part, uh, part of the society, that is, uh, uh, uneducated st uh, students, we believe, uh, and, uh, and between this uh, high class corporate ends. Moving on. And uh, this would be a small uh, cost breakup, like the whole operation cost would uh, come around 90 lakhs and the tax benefits would be, uh, what we gaining would be like 50 to 1 crore per annum and uh, child education fund would be 75% of tax benefits and uh, the MLM or the multi-level marketing commission, uh, the agent has to be committed with 2% uh, of tax benefit and that will uh, keep him motivated we believe and the start, uh, stall setup uh, would be uh, 2 lakhs per annum and uh, setup cost would be again uh, 1 lakh 8000 per annum. And uh, to conclude, you know, I would like to give back uh, uh, Jerry to conclude and uh, uh, conclude our message. I think there is no need for a conclusion because the message is loud and clear. What the children of this nation needs is not our sympathy, it is a helping hand. Thank you. Gentlemen, the ideas, the ideas very good, appreciable, but I'm doubtful, doubtful about the implementation part of it. You are saying that you know you are, you are having, you are planning to tie up with the government of India as well as the UNICEF. Will it be possible? Sir, tie up in the sense would be when we tie up, when we talk about tie up with the government, all we mean here, for example, in a state like Kerala is that you have techno park and you have info, info park. Setting up a stall in one of those parks would mean a tie up, in a way a tie up with the government. We need government support. We can't survive without government support. They are more than willing to support NGOs like us, which, because it is for a good cause. When you talk about UNICEF, your, all you need is an application to the UNICEF and, and they will inspect our records, they will inspect our intentions and if they are satisfied, they are on board with us. So are you expecting any financial help from these, uh, these bodies? No sir, no sir. Since the investment at, f at upfront is minimal, we are not expecting any, we are not uh, expecting. And uh, more than that, you know, that MLM concept is also not so clear, you know, yes, how, how you are uh, planning to do that? Sir, we are offering jobs by which, j uh, just the way network marketing has been done, we, we don't actually hire people. We offer commission-based uh, jobs to people, to agents, who, uh, when they join our organization, they will be in charge of the stall. And all they have to do is entice to use a better word, to entice corporate honchos to channelize their funds, to convince them that this is for a good cause, to convince them that their money is going to be used for this, to convince them that CSR... Do you think that that, uh, that will be an easy job for you? It won't be an easy job. They will be given special training for the enticement. Sir, again, I'll uh, uh, give you a small idea. Like, uh, think of, uh, assume that it is one rupee what we are getting, or what uh, the company is ready to give out of their tax benefits. You know, that one rupee, the se uh, when we are getting that, uh, the 75 paise, it goes to the um, sponsors, like uh, sponsoring of the children or whatever. And, and two, pa two paise would go to this commission agents. And the rest would be our uh, profit, uh, profit in the sense like wealth, which would be help us to sustain and develop uh, for the, uh, further development in the future. And another thing, sir, to remember is the CEOs will be on board for this because they are availing tax benefits out of this. Okay, Jerry, uh, okay. we are very much uh, convinced about how you will be sharing the money you will be getting from the corporates. Yes, sir. And the important point is that how you will convince the corporates, the, uh, you are saying it's a cynical CEO, how you will convince the cynical CEOs to share with their money? Sir, uh, that is what I mentioned, sir. They will, we will emphasize on the fact that this will add to your reputation. This will add to the fact that you are supporting CSR. This will increase your reputation among the general public. Wouldn't that be enough, sir, for a company to be on board? See, some companies are having their own, uh, you know, CSR programs. Yeah, yeah. Sir. See, if they are doing th by their own, they'll be getting more acceptance, you know. Right, right. Rather than uh, joining hands with you. Yeah. Sorry, again. Uh, Sir, we, when we have UNICEF on board, when you have UNICEF on board and whatever uh, transactions uh, the corporate does with us will have this UNICEF label and hence they will be associated with UNICEF. That is something that they cannot achieve on their own. And the second thing is why go through all of the hassle? That is our job. 
Okay, how much money you are actually planning to accumulate in a year? The first year, you, are you launching it now or you are already in process? So this is just the prototype, this is just the, uh, uh, the concept that we are pitching towards uh, uh, the CEO. Right, what is your plan of generation of money? How much money you are planning to develop, I mean generate in a, a period of uh, one year, next one year? Uh, that is what we have uh, done in the cost part, like uh, uh, the cost would... Uh, no, that is operational cost. Operational okay. cost means your operational cost, right? I'm not asking what is fund. your operational fund. cost. You are going fund. to collect yeah, certain funds for it, uh, sparing, right? What is the uh, total uh, amount of fund, sir, fund you are actually? We did not put that because it all depends on... Yeah. That is a weakness of us. The convincing of the uh, CEOs is a thing in no, the No, it is not like that. How much, how many people are you targeting initially for the first year for which how much money you re re really need to raise? Sir, actually we are setting up uh, uh, stalls in uh, right now uh, in Info Park as well as Techno Park. So again, it depends depends upon the number of companies who are ready to... So, to set up a uh, stall in a techno park, whom will you approach? Uh, the government the of India. Government, uh, no, 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 the where, the government. The, uh, that is where the government part comes in. Uh, because uh, without their help, we were not supposed to do any further activities. Even though we have uh, such a nice backup from any service. Time over, right? Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you, Jerry and George. Next, we have MG002 on stage. Judges, please note MG002 on stage. <laughs> 